Hello, it's Anya Devine here and um, got the privilege of working outside in sunny West Cork today. I'm just going to paint an eye on Ina's pa uh, painting here. Um, yeah, just from the photograph, she, this was this was done from a sitting and now I'm going to explain how you would tackle an eye uh, in watercolour from the photograph. Okay. <clears throat> So first of all, I want to establish something of the dark that's in the socket of the eye there on the left as we're looking at her. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I use the um, three quarter inch brush and I've got ultramarine blue. And the consistency is important here. You don't want it to be so runny that it's creating a lake down at the bottom here, but you want it to be runny enough, fluid enough, that it'll uh, occupy the space that you're wanting to fill. Just putting a touch of cadmium orange into it to dull it down a little bit. So that was ultramarine blue with a touch of cadmium red and cadmium orange. <coughs> the umbrella is flailing around a little bit here. So just filling in the shape of the space made by the shadow underneath the eyebrow and uh, under the eye there's also a little bit of shadow that's a similar colour that comes up to meet the upper surface of the lower lid there. <coughs> And I think I'll make it slightly warmer where the eye socket meets the bridge of the nose. I think varying the, the colours that you use is important. Around the area of the eye, it helps to distinguish parts from each other. Okay, so... We've got some sort of a way in now. I'm finding the landscape of the eye through locating the darks and lights in the area. You'll notice I've turned the, the photograph on an angle because I've given her more of an angle than she had for some reason. And I quite like the, the angle, so I'm <clears throat> just going to continue with that. Yeah, I can't resist, even although this is an eye demonstration, now there is, uh, whenever I've got a colour on the, on the brush that's uh, seen elsewhere, I kind of want to uh, continue bringing it all up together. As Suzanne says, my painting holds hands and comes up together. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush to capture the iris. This is a half inch brush. These are craft brushes that you can get from the Royal and Langnickel, but you can get them from the range in Britain. <coughs> and uh, they're, the, the joy of them is that they're firm bristled and they come to a fairly fine, a fairly fine edge. So you can capture, you can print an edge quite simply. Um, and they're firm enough that you can just lay the colour on. <clears throat> so what I want to do now is to identify the position of the iris there. I think I'll actually go down to the even smaller one. There's a quarter inch one. That's really the best size for describing the shape of the size of the iris. I'm not going into too much the shape of the iris. It's really just to <clears throat> capture uh, the rough position of it in relation, say, to the eyebrow above it. And when you're when you're painting, uh, say for example the upper lid, you want to look more at the shape of the space of skin between the upper lid and the eyebrow than you, than you do want to focus on the lid itself, because then you're thinking, oh my God, I'm painting an eye and I have to be careful. So really, uh, see if you can ease the pressure by seeing just in terms of shape and size of things. Okay, the wind here is handy because it's, everything is drying quite quickly which is very useful in the area of the eye. You want to be able to let things dry so that you can clarify. Now I'm putting some more cadmium red into the ultramarine blue there in order to get a darker tone to represent the dark of the upper lid. And there's a few directions to the upper lid. If you can find 
a couple of different directions and you're on your way. <clears throat> so I'm painting and I'm going to put some Van Dyke brown in there now as well, just to give it a richer dark. And I'm finding the climb up here. And again, you don't want it to be too harsh and hard. It's still fluid. The, the brush is still held together by the paint. Um, and actually I'm going to include some, uh, the brush is held together by the water. I'm going to include some of the dark of the eyebrow as I introduce dark into the eye area itself. I think it's helpful to also re-emphasize the darks on the eyebrow, knowing that you can always go back and uh, make it a bit milder later on if need be. Uh, so I'm going to use the dark and the upper lid and finding the, the direction that way and the direction this way and considering possibly which um, corner of the eye is higher than the other and to get the corner I'm going to make some um, cadmium red just put some cadmium red into the colours that I was already using so it's not pure red um, in order to identify the kind of watery inside corner of the eye there Yeah, and maybe that could also be used somewhere here, like around the upper lid. <coughs> yeah, okay. And I could actually bring some warmth again in here and find more of the shape that's happening down there. And I wanted to say too that when you're painting the iris, you might consider more the shape of the white of the eye on either side of the iris than actually to be too involved in the precise circle of the iris itself, because often it's not really a circle, it's kind of cut off by the upper lid, <coughs> and in this case also a little bit by the lower lid. <coughs> so I'm going to mix blue, uh, cer the cerulean blue that's here, I'm going to mix that with the ultramarine blue and go back into explaining the eye a little bit more and creating almost like a, a, a shadow. Um, from the overhanging eyelid onto the iris. You often find that there's a, a cast shadow that's helpful to set the eye in space. And yeah, I'm going to dry the brush now so that I can eat into the uh, shape of the iris here. I want to cut that off there so that it's creating the shape of the white space that's here more convincingly. Uh -huh. And then maybe a little bit of, oh we're okay for time, a little bit of cadmium orange into the lid. I'm gonna, yeah, so that's the cadmium orange mixed with the alizarin crimson because I want to give the lid some sort of value. Uh, this is a printout now from a, a photo I took on my phone so the colours aren't that rich really. So I can kind of, just because I know that there's a warmth generally in the eyelashes and it's a helpful warmth in the eye, eyelid I meant it's a helpful warmth to identify uh, I kind of know it more than can see it here but um, yeah sometimes that's you can make an informed choice about those things the other light that I like to pull out is the uh, light of the upper surface of the lower lid which I want to give a different color to I think this is uh, ro rose matter I happen to have in my palette there and I think I'm going to put that there. You know Helena who sits for me quite a bit with the long long hair. <coughs> Helena um, uses this as an eyeliner colour and it really emphasises her beautiful blue, uh, green eyes. Having that bright rose matter eyeliner beneath them. Okay I'm just going to do another couple of moves now to kind of anchor down the inner corner of the eye with some darks again. You know, as soon as one part is dry, you can re-establish it more clearly. I love that about watercolour, that you can um, let it alone and see what the water does for a while and then come back to it if need be to um, make a few more considered marks that'll just assist the watercolour shape and make it read more convincingly is the form you're explaining <coughs> and all these little touches are really satisfying i think the thing is too as soon as you put in some uh, warmth it, it helps the 
to have some of the opposite. You know, it just gives a bit of a liveliness to it. I wanted to soften the top of the eyebrow there. I put that in quite dark and harshly early on, so I think it could be integrated a little bit more softly into the shadows beneath it as well. <coughs> yeah, and you'd be standing back, <coughs> stand back, <coughs> excuse me, uh, stand back a lot as you're working, build in pauses, and that allows you to know whether or not what's, what you've just done is working before going too far down the rabbit hole of relentlessness. Uh, you can identify where you need, to, when you need to stop if you stand back. And often you might want to just leave a part alone that may feel unresolved, but once you do something somewhere else, it uh, resolves itself, the original bit. <coughs> I think that's maybe all I want to say there about that. I, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see how it is now. <coughs> the other thing that's quite handy is to be able to lift out at the corner of these brushes, a damp, clean corner can uh, lift out the light again if you want to, for example, decrease the volume of the pupil there, you could eat into it with a clean damp brush. I'm swapping from corner to corner because I want to keep it clean. You don't want to pick up the pigment and simply push it back in. I want to keep it clean, so <coughs> regularly wash the brush when you're lifting off. And uh, what am I doing now? Blue and brown mixed together. Using the Van Dyke brown and the ultramarine blue to deepen the tone where the iris meets the lower lid. That upper surface of the lower lid is a nice step in. And I could emphasize as far as I see, I suppose, by increasing.